Hello there, Becky here from Chimera Crafting. Uh, welcome to my video. Uh, I am going to show you how I recently did some snow dyeing. Very exciting. Um, we very rarely get snow in my particular area. We have quite a unique microclimate, which means that when the rest of the UK gets snow, we tend to be sat just watching it on our social media feeds and the news. <laughs> but we got some. So I've never tried snow dyeing before. It's my very first time. So please do uh, have a cuppa and join me whilst I show you the process and the end results. Okay, so here we've got the yarn soaking. I'm using a two-ply um, nylon and Blueface Leicester um, sock weight. I've just got the two skeins here. Um, they're soaking in water that is acidic. The acid that I'm using is just some white vinegar. So I'm going to soak them for somewhere in the region of about 20 minutes, half an hour. Let them bloom, you know, as the fibres expand, taking all of the acid, which is what helps the dyes to fix. There we go. So this is the setup that I'm using um, for the snow dyeing. Um, and what it is, is I've just got a, a baking um, cooling sheet. I've forgotten what you call those actually. You know what I mean though, you can see what it is. Um, and a couple of glass ramekins underneath and it's in my one of my steamer trays. Now the reason for this is because I don't want the yarn to sit in the water as the snow melts. So I've raised it up a little bit just to prevent that happening and obviously all of the gaps mean that the um, snow can melt through it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the um, pre-soaked yarn on top. I'm going to spread it out really quite thinly because um, I don't want just one side to get dyed and the other to not. Um, but this is my first time trying this, so it's just a massive experiment. So next bit is we I'll uh, spread it out and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so here you can see the uh, yarn spread out on the uh, baking sheet, the cooling um, sheet that I still can't remember the proper name for. You can see I've sort of uh, scruffled it up a little bit. Um, I don't want it to the dye to hit like too equally, too evenly. I really want this to be... A pretty wild experiment so you can see how I've laid that out that's the two skeins on there ready to go now I just need to grab my snow okay so snow grabbed um, it's lovely powdery and very very soft I'm looking forward to this so I'm gonna pop this onto the yarn I need both hands to do that so um, I can't show you me doing it but I'll show you it piled up so we, here we have the um, dye powders that I'm going to use um, these are just normal salt and pepper shakers. I use them sometimes for all sorts of different techniques, sometimes including speckling. Now, obviously, health and safety, uh, dye powders, acid dye powders are not food safe in any way, shape or form. So these bad boys will not be used to put salt on my chips anytime soon. So we've got a little bit of blue, some pink, some yellow and some green. I've added a little bit of yellow to the to the green because uh, I don't want it to be too tealish, but we'll see what happens with that. Um, it's going to be interesting regardless. I have a huge pile of snow on my yarn. Look at that. So it's quite thick, as you can see. It's quite deep. And what this will do is, as it melts, it's going to take those um, dye powders down through the yarn and take it where it will. It's quite a romantic idea actually. I love it. So I'm going to sprinkle the dye powders on next. I will feel some of me doing that but I will be wearing a mask so I won't be saying a great deal. There we go. So this is the powder sprinkled on. So there's some sort of joke about yellow snow in here somewhere, I'm sure. And so we'll see what happens. So like I say, as it melts, this is going to um, draw down uh, 
through the snow as it melts into the yarn. Um, I'm not really sure what to expect. It might marble, it might be a big horrible blobby mess. Um, regardless, it's interesting. <laughs> and I will uh, check back with you in a little while. The wonders of video, it'll be in just a moment. Okay, so we've had to switch to artificial light, but this is quite a few hours later. And you can see it is um, melted quite a lot in comparison to what it, has, what it was earlier on. I am loving how some of these colours are mixing with the ice crystals. Uh, this itself is, is actually really beautiful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super impressed. You can see some of the yarn starting to peek through just in the centre there. I'm really excited about this. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Um, this is my first time trying it. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying the process though. It's wonderful to have a go at something different, something new. We'll zoom right out. There we go. So you can you can see the full thing. And there we are. I'll check back in once it has fully melted. Okay, so here we are. You can see the snow is all but melted. There's a few little bits um, still left, but look at that. I am so impressed, I have to say. Some absolutely gorgeous colours. I'm really impressed with the effect. And you can see um, what little bits of snow there are. Most of the dye has left it now. It sort of sank through. Wow. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get some heat on uh, these because my acid dyes require um, heat as well as acid. And as I said earlier on, I used vinegar to soak this yarn in. So the acid's there, so I just need to apply some heat and that will make sure that it fixes the colour. Um, and then I'll give it a lovely rinse and then it'll be drying. I'll show you it rinsing actually, because that's always quite interesting. Okay, so here we are, we are rinsing. Now the colour's taken really well. Um, the uh, rinsing water is completely clear. We are in artificial light still at the moment, which I do apologise for, because it means that you're getting all sorts of strange reflections on the water, etc. Um, but I really wanted to get these rinsed and dried, um, put to dry tonight so that I can film them in natural daylight tomorrow for you and then get this video out for you all to be able to watch. So I am completely in love with how many different shades uh, we've got going on there from just the four pigments. Now I tend to, when I'm mixing colours, I tend to work from a really limited palette of, of colours and I use uh, I use just a few in order to be able to um, create all the different shades that I do. Um, I do use measurements, etc., to ensure that I can I can reproduce them. But it never ceases to amaze me um, how colour works, and you would never think that you would get such a such a massive um, amount of really beautiful tonal variation uh, just from, like I said, the the four different um, pigments that were used in this. Beautiful. So I'm going to get these bad boys rinsed and then on to dry and in just a moment you will get to see them fully dry and in natural daylight. So what I did with the um, the water, the snow melt that had taken the dye through the yarn, obviously not all of it stuck to the yarn, some of it ended up um, in the bottom of the steamer tray which you can see here. Now. I would never put that down the drain, it's it's not a good thing to do at all. Um, and I also like to try and reuse water as much as possible, etc. Um, so what I actually did was I've dyed a couple of uh, midi skein in the sock, sock weight yarn. Um, and that's like the true colour of, of the runoff that was left. I thought it might be quite interesting to see. Not really sure what I'm going to do with these. If they look well with the others, um, if the others are decent looking, etc. Then I think what I might do is I might just pop them with it. It might be uh, quite a nice thing. And then I had a 100 gram skein of Dorset Hornbreed double knit yarn. Um, that I'd actually dyed a green, but I wasn't happy with it. It wasn't. It was an experiment, and it 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 wasn't really what I was um, aiming for. 
So I popped that in as well. Now this is looking very interesting. I mean this one is the definition of a one-off. I've got no idea if I'll decide to sell it or not. It all depends really on how it dries. But the point is, is that you can see that water in there is completely clear. Now what I'll do with this water, because it is acidic water, um, I will add this into my kettle dyes. So I'll, I'll save it basically and I will be able to reuse it for when um, I'm using different dye techniques. And I did exactly the same thing with the um, water that I soaked the original skeins of yarn in as well. That was all saved uh, and reserved for future use. So how much fun was that? I loved it. Want to see the end results? So here we are. Here is one of the skeins. I've left this one um, unfurled so you can have a look at the colour and see all the different little bits of variation and variegation. I completely love this effect. I love how there's the gentle mottling with the odd little bit of um, speckling and the way those colours have mixed. Yeah, given that I had no idea how this was going to turn out, I am thoroughly impressed with the results. So here we've got the other skein which I've kept schemed <laughs> um, to show you, kept twisted to show you, so you can see how that looks as well. Obviously the two skeins are a little bit different from each other um, because of the nature of the random placement of the colour. But if you remember that um, I also dyed using the runoff, the snow melt, and if I zoom out a little bit you can see those together as well. I think they look great. I was expecting this one to sort of go a little bit muddy, maybe, because there were so many colours and it was all mixed together. And But I'm actually really pleased with how those, have, uh, how those are looking. And I think that they look brilliant together. So if these beauties do end up in my shop, I am going to sell them together. Because if these skeins were made into socks, I think that this would make great toes, heels and cuffs. Yeah. Super happy, super impressed and super pleased. And I'd love to know what you think as well. If you've enjoyed this uh, video, please do um, leave me a comment and let me know. It really helps me and it helps my visibility too, as I'm sure you realise and appreciate. So thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. This has been a wonderful adventure and uh, I will be producing another video soon. Take care.